Hey YouTube, uh, today I want to do a video about compound interest. It's something that I think all of us know about, but I can say for myself I didn't really fully understand, you know, the power of compound interest. I think it's a, a very powerful weapon that uh, the elite use in order to uh, enrich themselves. I know you always hear about the uh, rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor, and I think it's one of the main reasons why, because they understand the power of it. And you can see that here in this photo that uh, Albert Einstein understood the power of um, compound interest. He called it the ninth wonder of the world. And uh, there's a formula that he's showing here. It's 72 divided by the interest rate equals the, uh, the time that it will take in order for that money to uh, double. So say, for example, you had um, 72 divided by 5, it would be 14.4 years in order to uh, double, and that works up to 20% interest rate. Then you see here, this is the formula in order to um, figure out the amount of uh, interest that you'll pay in a light in a certain time period. Basically, our entire economy is uh, fictitious because there's no way that these debts can uh, ever be paid off. Um, resource extraction, real estate, stock market, GDP, and population must continue rising in accord with the compound interest rates in order to maintain the Ponzi scheme. You know, and uh, basically after a certain period of time, it goes parabolic. You know, it starts off quite subtly, the, the curve, but then it, it, it turns into uh, a parabolic curve and goes straight up. You know, and you can see when you see that chart that it's pretty much impossible to ever repay all of the compound interest rate, which is, uh, you know, all the credit cards, mortgages, loans, it, almost all of it is uh, based upon compound interest. And as we saw with the uh, financial crisis in 2008, when the indebted economies can't pay, Bankers and investors will call in uh, their loans and foreclose. I don't know if you know that, but uh, the bank pretty much at any time can call in your loan. And if you can't pay immediately, you know, or very quickly, they can just uh, repossess it. And I mean the, the full the full amount. You know, it happened a lot during the Depression. Uh, French socialist Prunthone states power of accumulation is infinite, yet is exercised only over finite qualities, qu quantities. Financial debt takes over the production. Minsky described this as the third and final Ponzi phase of the financial cycle. You know, and the world's largest borrower is the United States government. It's not just people, it's also uh, all of the economies of the world are facing the same Compounding interest, which is what's driving up uh, all of the uh, national debts and pretty much all they're able to do now is to, to service the uh, interest rates, you know, the, the interest costs every year. Basically, the uh, financial class is acting like a parasite. The strategy of a parasite in nature is not simply to drain their host, host nourishment for themselves, but to take over its brain, which has happened they brainwashed us to believe that asset price inflation is wealth creation. Instead of the industrial economy that economic futurists around the turn of the 20th century had anticipated, a neo-rentier economy emerged. It was driven not by what economists called productive loans, those that provided borrowers with the means to earn the revenue to pay off the loan, with its interest charges and still keep normal profit for themselves by creating new means of production but increasingly by predatory credit, above all by loans extended to enable buyers to bid up prices for assets already in place. The U.S. economy's fate threatens to go far beyond a Minsky moment in which markets crash to wipe out the overhang. Basically throughout uh, most of history, compound interest was illegal, and it was definitely illegal within uh, Roman finance. Prohibitions against excessive interest, or more properly, usury, have been found in almost all societies since antiquity. Charging simple interest was barely condoned, but charging compound interest was immoral and rapacious. The problem was clear 
in the ancient world, but has become obscured over time. Like I said, they they brainwashed us. They've taken over our minds. Even Adam Smith, considered the father of free market economic theory, favored a ceiling on interest. Once usury laws were taken off the books in the United States, a major credit crisis followed within a few decades. The South Sea bubble, the crash of 1929, and most of the American panics of the 19th and 20th century were all caused by excessive borrowing and high leverage that spilled over into the equities markets. When securitization became popular in the mid-1970s, it led to a revolution in lending practices that helped democratize credit, leading to the inevitable housing bubble that burst in 2007 and 2008. The same technique also led to the widespread use of credit cards. <clears throat> they replaced the word debt with credit. You know, imagine if they, they uh, called it a debt card instead of a credit card. We all know that interest in debt is the foundation of this world economic system. Obviously, the Federal Reserve is the center of this evil debt-based bonded system. The present debt-based economy began with the inception of the Bank of England in, in 1694. Uh, anyways, we're going to leave you with the question that what do you think would happen if you tried to do this? You know, and by that I mean that if you printed money out of thin air, lent it to people charging them compound interest in order to get rich, by parasiting off of the productive economy, by confiscating and privatizing the world's resources. Obviously, you'd go to jail. I mean, just for loan sharking. So how can it be right?